My pokey but fertile mind keeps coming up with more counterintuitive thoughts in reaction to the Boston terror attacks. Of course, as usual, thoughts are not really what counts. Action is what counts. And here is an action that I've taken that you might want to try uh, in reaction to this crisis. Actually, in my cases, it was it was a little bit more of a reaction to the Rich Paul crisis, where a man was uh, sentenced uh, to possibly 80 years in jail for marijuana. Possibly will be sentenced to that much. But anyway, whatever the crisis, uh, here, here's what I did. I contacted somebody who I have been in conflict with for the last six or eight months. Not really active conflict, but we've just kind of been uh, on the outs. And I used th these crises as, a, as an excuse to contact that person, a liberty activist, and try and get the hatchet buried. It's a great time, a great opportunity to do that sort of thing when the authorities attack. Now, I'm not sure if the authorities attacked during the Boston thing. Well, I guess they, they, they've sort of been attacking innocent homeowners by invading their homes. But anyway, it's a time of crisis. Uh, it's a, so it's a good time to reach out to your enemies and bury hatchets. If a lot of us do that whenever we're attacked, then there'll be less motivation to attack us because the attacks make us stronger. So, yeah, if you're feeling helpless in reaction to this crisis... I would say take the opportunity that it provides you to reach out to someone who you're in conflict with. Get that conflict over with, especially if it's a conflict between you and another liberty activist. It's kind of, it reminds me of the sort of the Grinch who stole Christmas reaction. If we as a community can react to adversity the same way that that town in the Grinch who stole Christmas did, we win. You know, if they, if, they, if they react to being stolen from by singing and, you know, carrying on their Christmas, uh, we can do the same. The Boston crisis, the Massachusetts crisis, is reminding us how much we need independent, reliable, universally trusted sources of information. It's reminding us that we kind of don't have that right now in the U.S. I'm not really sure I can name one. Maybe there are some offshore media outlets that can be trusted because of the fact that they're not under the federal government's thumb. I'm not sure which one I should name, though, in that regard. I, I could be really wrong if I were to name one. I've heard that there's some kind of active thread on Reddit where they are doing sort of like a crowdsourced investigation of some kind as to what happened. That sounds like a great idea. I haven't seen the thread. Wikipedia maybe comes close to, to, to this in the, in the crowdsourcing sense, but I've also heard a lot of people question information that's on Wikipedia, so I just don't know. What do you think is the most objective source of information about events in the U.S.? Objective reliable, universally trusted. Who would you name? I mean, if I had to name someone in the in the early 90s, it probably would have been Ted Koppel. But I don't, I can't name a Ted Koppel out there right now in, in the mainstream press. Certainly there are some people in the mainstream press that are liberty-leaning, but I'm just not ready to call them Ted Koppel. Liberty-leaning is not precisely what I'm asking for. I'm asking for universally trusted now, I had said earlier that one of the other ways we should react to this crisis is by asking questions that no one else will ask. And here's one I have uh, of uh, the New Hampshire police who were involved in the Massachusetts manhunt. Did any New Hampshire police participate in home invasions of innocent persons? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And I think that has implications for us in New Hampshire. If you got a bunch of cops from a New Hampshire town uh, getting used to, you know, you uh, going into house to house searches in Massachusetts, it's going to be that much easier for them to just do it in New Hampshire. And of course, there's also the factor of taxpayers being forced to underwrite it. Does it set a precedent for Massachusetts cops coming up here and doing that sort of thing to us? 
How much did it cost taxpayers? It did not produce the, sus the uh, suspect that they were hunting for. As usual, civilians were the hero on that. How many victimless crime charges did they levy as a result of their home invasions during that day or two? How many will they levy later? Now, I guess I'm not necessarily talking about New Hampshire police, but I'm thinking more Massachusetts police. How many bongs did they find? How many victimless crimes did they uncover while they were rummaging through everybody's house? How many innocent lives will be damaged or ruined as a result of that? It seems like there is a little bit of a national debate going on right now as to whether the suspect should be read his Miranda rights. Uh, but I think that's a smaller issue than all the different cruel things that were probably done or will be done to all these different innocent homeowners. The Miranda debate may be the debate that the feds want us to be having on the national level. That may be why authoritarian Lindsey Graham brought it up. Well, I think he brought it up. Maybe it was the ACLU first. Of course, every suspect should be read their Miranda rights if, if, it, if it's required by law or falls into that, uh, that category. But, uh, again, the stronger case to be made is the case against authorities who went after large numbers of innocent people by going into their homes. Especially if they harmed or endangered those people in the process. And I think they did. In at least a few cases. I do want to weigh in, though, against the pessimism that so many people seem to be spewing in reaction. A lot of liberty activists are just reacting very pessimistically to, to the Massachusetts events. And, of course, the initial events themselves were very tragic, and the government's reaction is inappropriate. But that doesn't mean that we as a liberty movement are are going to automatically be devastated uh, by these events. We are devastated in the sense that the innocent people were hurt, but we're not devastated necessarily in the overall progress of liberty. Uh, because, yes, it's true that the authorities will use this bombing as an excuse for all kinds of cruelties against the people. It's also true that many in Massachusetts behaved in a very sheep-like manner just like the authorities want them to. But remember, we're not here to save Massachusetts. We're free staters. Our job is to save a small section of the world for liberty, for those who want to live in liberty. The crackdown in Massachusetts will move us closer to that. There will be people who will escape that state permanently because of what happened down there, because of what the police did, they will get out and come here. That's the history of Massachusetts authoritarianism. There are various free staters who are here just because of that one law that required them to get health insurance. And over the many years previous, of course, people moved from Massachusetts to New Hampshire for many other reasons, all related to excessive government. This is going to speed that trend, and it's going to take New Hampshire toward liberty faster, ultimately, I believe. Don't obsess too much over Massachusetts. It's the Lebanon to our Israel. It is a dark world. It is a place where horrible things happen and are going to get more horrible. But, unlike the Lebanon-Israel is situation, uh, we're set up in a position to help the abused people of Massachusetts who want to come towards us, towards a, a better life. Even if 90% of people across the country welcomed this crackdown in Massachusetts, we could, we could still stand to benefit from the, the refugees that it will create. We love, welcome, and benefit from political refugees. However, 90% is not at all what's happening. The reaction to this crisis is very different from the 9-11 from the crisis. It's mixed. People are on both sides, it seems like, especially in New Hampshire. It seems like there's a lot of 
cynicism about the government's reaction. I've seen quite a few cynical mainstream press articles questioning the way the authorities handled this. I have also seen, uh, if you notice, Glenn Beck is starting to come over toward the government inside job theories. Heck, in the sense that makes him more radical than me in a pro-liberty direction. Because I never have any idea who to believe. I never know which theory is true. Anyway, if the historical pattern repeats itself, there will be perhaps months of honeymoon and authority worship, followed by years of persistent and sometimes growing dissatisfaction with the official story. That's the history of these kinds of things. That's the history of Pearl Harbor and Gulf of Tonkin uh, incidents, where the initial reaction is very pro-government, but over the years, the history starts to side with a different version of events, blaming authorities for what happened. It's now very mainstream to believe that the government sort of triggered the Pearl Harbor attack or, you know, stood down in the face of it, wanted it to happen. It's also very mainstream to completely dismiss the, the official Gulf of Tonkin story from the 60s. Nowadays, that process of cynicism happens much faster. It didn't take 40 years for people to start questioning the 9-11 official story. And it's not going to take them 40 months to start questioning the Boston official story. If we've reached the point, eventually, we probably will, where only 10% of people ever believe a government story about anything, then I think liberty will probably come shortly thereafter. We've already gotten to the point where only a third of Americans, actually less than a third, are pro-federal government. Or, you know, view it favorably. I believe that is a record low. There's another silver lining that I'm seeing in this tragedy, and that is American-Russian relations were deteriorating at some speed over the last few years. This attack will probably reverse that process to some extent. You will probably see the United States stop haranguing the Russians hypocritically about human rights and you'll see closer cooperation between these two governments which I do not fear because of the fact that Russia on the international scene has been an increasingly constructive force I guess you could say they have been acting over the last 10 years I would say much like the old US used to act on the international scene not perfect, uh, not even close, actually very Russian, but way better than what they were in the Soviet days. So it, I, I, I welcome the, the little bit, you know, of a, of a push toward closer ties between the Russians and the Americans, the feds and the Kremlin. I don't want two nuclear superpowers to be at each other's throats. I play uh, XCOM. Many of you probably play the new version of XCOM. I play the one from the 90s. And in probably in both versions, there's a scenario that commonly plays out called the terror attack. So you've got your troops and they're ready to go and they're waiting for terror attack. And the terror attack will happen. The aliens strike uh, an American or you know some city in the world. And you send your troops and you try to stop the aliens from shooting up a bunch of civilians. Well... In the version of XCOM that I play, you can't really win a terror attack. You can technically defeat the aliens, but you're never gonna you're never gonna score very much. And the, the goal really is to keep the aliens from scoring 500 or 800 points, right? By you, you score maybe a minor victory, and and that results in you only losing 26 points. You know, the aliens only score five points. You know, something like that. Well, in the real world, 9-11 was like one of those attacks where the bad guys score, you know, five or six hundred points. It, it, there's nothing good to show for it. But this attack in Boston, I think, was more of the kind of attack where the bad guys scored, 
26 or 27 points. And you know, it was a, you know, whoever the bad guys were, whether it was the feds that, that were behind this, whether it was really a couple Chechen teenagers acting alone or as part of a conventional terrorist cell, whoever did it, the score was much lower against liberty. At least, if you're thinking about liberty in New Hampshire. Maybe that indicates a trend. We'll see. Just stop obsessing over what's your, on your TV and your Facebook page and take some constructive action. Again, my favorite is reaching out to uh, someone who you're on the outs with and mending fences. <laughs>